it's officially fall. So let's take a look at the latest fall trends and see what we can do to replicate those fashions in our sewing. The first dress that I found inside of the mall was a sheaf dress. And every single store that I went into thereafter also had a sheaf dress. So I can assume that the sheaf dress is in fashion for this fall. The first three sheaf dresses that I found come from Michael Kors. The one on the far left is long sleeved and down to the ankles. Then the two on the far right are mini skirt versions of the same outfit. One of them is long sleeved and the other one is sleeveless with a square neckline. You could get all three of those looks by using the same pattern. I'm going to show you that pattern, but before I do, I want to show you what I found in Nordstrom. Inside Nordstrom, I found this $88 sheaf dress split down the middle, one side cream, the other side black. It has a plunging neckline and a collar. I thought this was an interesting variation on the outfit, but I do think that you could make that cheaper than you would purchase it in the store. I also found this turtleneck version of the sheaf dress. And I kid you not, they really did go crazy with sheaf dresses this year. This is McCall 6886. It is now a discontinued pattern, but I have used it hundreds of times over the years. And I think that if you can find this pattern online, it will be well worth having. The reason why I say this is because you have many different things that you can do with all of these different views here. Uh, you have neckline variations including the v-neck and the regular scoop neck and then you have different links here and another wonderful thing that you can do with this particular pattern is actually shorten it and use it to make a t-shirt or a long sleeve shirt and this view right here view b is actually the same dress that we saw out of the michael kors window so it would just be a wonderful option to just have this pattern um, if you're unable to find this pattern since it is discontinued, then I do have some other patterns that uh, you might be able to find and be able to create the same look as well. So let's go over and take a look at those. The first pattern that I would like to take a look at is McCall's $79.99. This pattern will be ideal for either making the Michael Kors outfit or for making the turtleneck version of the sheaf dress that we saw out of Nordstrom. This is McCall's 8194. You can use it to create the Nordstrom two-tone look by simply removing the placket and adding a collar. However, I will do a bit of a disclaimer by saying that you can use the other patterns that I have shown to get the same two-tone look. You would just have to do a little bit more pattern alteration in order to make that happen because you have to split the front of the outfit in half and also split the back in half in order to get the two different colors and you would also have to alter the neckline in order to make it work and look exactly like the one that we saw out of the store it can be done but it would just be more work speaking of altered necklines we did not talk about how to get the square neckline in the Michael Kors dress to the far right. You can get that square neckline very easily by simply copying a, another square neckline outfit or pattern that you have. Uh, and you could also find a ton of videos here on YouTube about how to create a square neckline. It's real simple and you don't necessarily need a pattern to do it. So I just thought that I would put that out there. Sheaf dresses are definitely not very plus size friendly and they also are not forgiving to other body types. However, you could get away with wearing this sort of style by adding a belt. And I saw this particular dress in Nordstrom and it gave me some ideas. There is an accompanying pattern that will work real well for this and it is from Nomi Patterns. The pattern is 2050. The storefront of Lucky Brand encompassed a lot of what I saw inside of the mall, which were all of these peasant tops and peasant dresses, which reminds me a lot of the 1970s. Flowers usually aren't my jam, but I really did love this particular top because it had the poofy sleeves with beautiful sleeve details that had lace on it and then beautiful placket details also with lace. 
To recreate the look, I most likely would go with Simplicity 8658, cut down the center front fold line, and add in a placket there with buttons and the ribbon details. I would also add a little bit of length to the sleeve so that I could then add in the pleats as well as the ribbon. If you don't feel like hacking a commercial pattern, then I would highly recommend going with the marine blouse from Tilly and the Buttons. This blouse right here gives you a lot of different pattern variations so you can really make this top your own or you could even alter it to make it look exactly like the one that we saw in the store. Lucky Brand also had this cute little mini dress that's paired with a military style jacket. I saw this sort of look all over the mall so I thought that I would show it to you. I am a modest dresser so I'm 90% sure that I would not wear this dress without a pair of leggings underneath but nonetheless it still is cute. Let's take a little closer look at the dress so that we can try to replicate the look when we look for a pattern. There's smocking and lace details at the top of the sleeveless dress. Then there's also some ladder style lace details on the bottom. For this dress, I most likely would just draft my own because it really is just a basic A-line dress with a very basic bodice that just has some shirting added to it. So it wouldn't be a hard pattern to create. So that's why I would do that. However, I do understand if you don't want to draft your own pattern. So I have found this pattern from Style Arc that I think will work very well. And it is the Nova Midi Dress. Now this dress does have three tiers to it, but you could take off the bottom tier and extend that middle tier there and lengthen it so that it looks like the dress that we found in the store. And you would also need to add some ease to the bodice in order to be able to add shirting there. For the jacket, I most likely would go with the Dorothy jacket from So Over It. I know it is not an exact match, but it is very close. And I think that it would look nice with this particular outfit. So now I would just like to touch on some of the other reoccurring trends that I saw in the mall. One of them was green. This is a green jacket that I found inside Nordstrom and it definitely is not the same jacket as the one that I found inside of Lucky Brand, but it is quite similar. So if you are trying to make jackets for the fall and you would like to stay on trend, then I would definitely try to go inside of the olive colored family. However, I do think that next year the olive color will actually be off trend because last year when I did the fall video, it was also olive. This year, dresses and skirts appear to be the end thing because every single store that I went to had mostly dresses and skirts inside and that is really unusual to me. This particular photo comes from Anthropology, and I really thought that it was a good representation of what I am talking about. I say probably 70% of the store had dresses and skirts in it, and I have never seen that in my life. I can't speak to the experience of some of the people who are older than me, but what I can say is for myself, all of my life, I've only been able to buy dresses and skirts in the spring and the summer. And if I wanted to wear dresses throughout the fall and the winter, then I had to pair them with a pair of pants underneath and a jacket on top in order to make it suitable. So it really is weird to me to see all of these dresses just everywhere for fall. Speaking of pants, all the pants and clothing in general that I saw had a lot of texture on it. I have no idea which store I was in when I took this picture, but it is a representation of differing textures being combined together to create one outfit. As I approached Gap, I finally found the pants that I had been looking for the entire shopping trip. What I did notice about this display is that it was full of texture. So you can still recycle your same patterns from years gone by and just use different fabrics that have more texture to them. Some of these items include your sweater knit, which is paired with the leather pants on the far right, or you could use like a polyester rib knit and pair it just with a regular pair of jeans, 
or you could even pair a sweater knit with a pair of corduroy pants to make it even more off the wall and different. I would simply go with the ginger jeans from Closet Core for the fitted pair of jeans if you're looking for a fitted pair. The Jilly jeans from Style Arc work wonderfully for your regular straight leg pair of jeans. And for those wide leg trousers, I still recommend going with the Closet Core Mitchell trousers. I did recommend these same trousers last year in my fall fashion trends video. If you haven't already seen the 2022 video, then please do go over and check that video out. I'll try to leave a link to it somewhere here on screen. And also, if you have not subscribed to my channel, then please do subscribe and tap that notification bell to receive updates. For those who do not wear pants, texture is also king when it comes to wearing skirts. This is a midi skirt made from wool and I just thought it was super cool because of all of this texture. Just look at it. You can easily achieve this look by just drafting a simple pattern and there's a ton of tutorials online showing you how to create your own pencil skirt to fit your body perfectly. Using wool isn't the only way to achieve a textured look with your garments. Of course, you can use leather in a skirt as well. And this is McCall's 8141 midi skirt. And this particular model did use leather, which is quite cool. And you could even make this more modest by untucking the shirt and even dropping the hem to make it longer if you really wanted to. Personally, I'm just going to be working with the fabric that I already have and trying to de-stash. And in order to create the textures and to stay on trend, I am going to be adding smocking, pleats, and lace, and any sort of things that I can add that will create texture in my existing fabrics. So what say you? What are you going to be making this fall? And also, what kinds of patterns would you use to recreate some of the looks that I showed today? Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to receive more sewing related content. Peace.